everybody. Today on the channel, something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about what I firmly believe to be one of the greatest unspoken social injustices we are currently facing. This is a topic very dear to my heart and I'm sure that of many others. So, ahead of this video, I have a bit of a favour to ask. If, come the end of this, you've had a good listen and you find yourself agreeing with me, or at least that I've raised a few valid points, please, please, like, comment down below, but most importantly, share it with everybody that you know. I think this is a topic that needs to be talked about far and wide, because it really is that important. And likewise, if you think I'm just some fat bloke in a flowery shirt driving an obnoxious car about the place and moaning about things that he doesn't understand, well, you can have a comment and a like and a share as well with your friends that are all going to mock me, but as, as long as you watch me first, I think I'll try my best not to mind all that much. What are we talking about today? Well, a topic that I think I'm going to dub EV poverty. It's a big one, it's a real one, and I think it needs addressing sooner rather than later. And, just in case you think this is another rant from me, desperate to hold on to my V8s and V12s, I promise you, this has absolutely nothing to do with the environment, and everything to do with the people that live in it. of the electric car, or EVs as they become known, is a really big one. And I think it's very easy to get people like myself wrong on the topic. I firmly believe, as I'm sure many of my fellow YouTubers do, that EVs are a very good thing. Applied correctly and used in the right scenarios, they are an absolutely essential part of our transport future. We need them. Stuff like this Tesla going past, I don't hate the person that owns that. Maybe they really need that car. Maybe there's a great reason for it. Maybe they go into a city centre every single day. And we do have big problems with pollution in places like London and the like. I've never ever said anything to the contrary. What I don't like is the way that EVs are being forced upon people and the timescale in which we're all expected to adopt them. You see, today's video is inspired by a comment that I got on my recent Mazda 3 video, one that I gave a fairly clickbaity title of uh, the car with the engine so clever it renders EVs redundant. And this wasn't a comment I got just once or twice. This was a comment that came from multiple people, tens if not hundreds, and it's one that I've seen on many other videos every single time that I discuss an EV in fact. You see, whenever I have an EV, I will always make a point of discussing how much it's cost me to own the particular week that I've had it, and invariably it'll often have cost a lot more than you might expect or hope. The comments that I'm referring to generally go a little bit like this. James, you silly slash fat slash flowery shirted man, delete as applicable. How dare you? You've done things completely wrong. Of course the EV has cost you loads of money because you've been charging it at public charging points. Why are you so stupid? Why don't you just charge it at home, on the driveway, using your cheap nitrate electricity like everybody else does? And in fact, people have said exactly that last bit. That's the bit that winds me up, that everybody does this. No. No, they don't. I, I want to chat to some of these EV people and, and ask them a simple, simple question, which is, are you really so completely, totally blinkered and out of touch with society as a whole that you've entirely lost any form of perspective? Are you really telling me that in your head you are convinced that every single person in this country, never mind the planet, is in exactly the same situation as you? That to me is an absolutely mind-bending perspective for anybody to have. How can you be so daft, so insensitive, so ignorant? And I'm not just talking about a few hundred people here and there dotted about the place. I'm talking about the real world scenarios of literally millions of people. The comments of this nature are of such a snobbish, elitist nature. They make me absolutely sick. And um, this, by the way, is why I'm going to need a little bit of help with this video. I had a few different titles in mind, such as um, EV owners, do they have souls? But actually, I know a lot of really nice EV owners that buy them for the right reasons, use them for the right things, and that would have been needlessly clickbaity and a little bit cruel and unfair. 
I'm not going to do that. I am also very, very aware this could go horribly, horribly wrong for me. You know, I can see the headline now, overweight YouTuber with three Ferraris driving an Aston Martin in a floral shirt berates poor old lady for her Nissan Leaf. I, I get it, I get it. And yes, I know there are people out there that think I've mentioned in every single video that I have a Ferrari, but um, you know, if you watch the channel already, you know that this is not news, this is not me showing off. Ferraris are, are lovely, lovely things. They're very expensive, very luxurious. Just like morals, those also are extremely expensive things that not everybody can afford. And I'm not just talking about cars either, it extends to everything, even simple stuff like food, organically grown, ethically sourced produce from local farms, from local farmers paid a fair rate for the work that they do. That's not cheap, is it? But it would be a little bit unrealistic, to say the least, to expect a £1.50 supermarket microwave meal to have the same ethical credentials. It's just not possible. The same, I suppose, could also be said for clothes. Spend £3 on a pair of jeans and um, it shouldn't be surprising that maybe the factory that made them isn't perhaps the best in terms of their uh, labour laws. Spend £400 on a pair of jeans and I would expect everybody in the entire process to have been handsomely paid for their fine work. Of course, that's not how it always happens, but that's how it should be. Now, before I get too carried away and turn into some sort of social justice warrior, that I certainly am not, you know, overweight Captain Planet with the silly shirt and the hair of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, let's uh, steer this conversation back towards cars, because this is what it's all about. My theory in this Mazda 3 video was that my electricity costs 35 pence per kilowatt hour. And the response was, that's only because I am a silly, silly man and I pay the normal rate electricity whatever hour of the day that I use it. And a few people cited Octopus Go as the alternative. Octopus Go is a tariff that gives you very, very cheap 10 to 12 pence a kilowatt hour night rate electricity between 2 and 6 a.m. Allow me to rebuff this comment right now. I looked at the Octopus tariff. As it happens, I'm now on Octopus as well. In fact, I am particularly upset with my previous energy company because I was on a nitrate electricity tariff. And then Bulb took me off of it without my consent, without my permission. And then they went bust and uh, I'm sort of stuck now. So I've lost my cheap nitrate electricity. But the problem is this. First off, four hours of an evening, even with a fast charging point, which I do have at the house, isn't enough to give me a full charge in an EV. So if I were doing a journey like the one I've done today, where I've done about 200 miles or so, I just wouldn't be able to get enough charge if I parked the car up on a fairly low battery. And for me, that's the reality. I know for many people it isn't, but the point of this video is I want a solution that works for everyone. We'll get onto it a little bit more in a bit. Secondly, I have a driveway, and not everybody does. In fact, not even everybody in my village has a driveway. Most of us do. We're very lucky like that, but not everyone. Thirdly, there is a little bit of this that everybody's kind of forgotten. Yeah, sure, I currently pay 35 pence a kilowatt hour. And if I were a, a smart human being and I had the Octopus Go tariff, I could pay about 10 pence for four hours in the middle of the morning. But everyone kind of forgets that if I did choose that tariff, my daytime electricity, in other words, outside the hours of 2 to 6 a.m., would go up by 20%. It would rise to about 42 pence per kilowatt hour. And guess what? In a household with two people that work from home, that would mean I am spending an awful lot more on electricity. As it is, my electricity bill is now somewhere between double and triple what it used to be just a few years ago. I don't need to add another 20% to it. ideal world, or the benevolent dictatorship that would be JM's Britain, this wouldn't be a problem because those who've decided that an EV is the right fit for them can buy one of those. We already have many manufacturers around the globe moving their lineup to an increasingly high percentage of pure EV products. So naturally, over the next decade or two, EVs are going to be taking over. But 
there is a problem. The process we are currently undergoing is not a natural one. It has been enforced. And like I promised, today I don't give two hoots about whether that's the right or wrong decision for the environment. I've discussed it in many other videos and other people have as well. This is not the point of today. The point of today is what happens to all the people, all the people that can't afford luxurious, expensive EVs. Now for people like myself, if I want to go and drive an old car into central London, it's going to be a bit expensive. Anything that's older than about 2016 if it's a diesel or 2006 if it's petrol, you have to pay the ULES charge, which now covers quite a big bit of London, and also, if you're going into central, the congestion charge as well. ULES is the ultra-low emission zone, and though I've chiefly been talking about London, many cities across Britain and Europe have the same thing. Originally, it covered only older heavy goods vehicles, but today it's for virtually all traffic. To begin with, it included a relatively small area of central London, but a recent and controversial expansion saw it grow to include everything within the North and South Circular, an area that covers almost 4 million people. It is also worth pointing out that elsewhere in Europe, these zones are often much stricter, with polluting vehicles often not allowed at certain times, if at all. And there is a school of thought that says, is the only reason we've not done that, because the revenue generated by fining people is of greater interest than the actual improvement in air quality. But that would be just crazy talk wouldn't it? I thoroughly disagree with the notion of the congestion charge being linked to how polluting your vehicle is. Now that we have a separate low emission zone charge, surely congestion should just be applied to any vehicle that doesn't live in London or have to go in there for set purposes with exemptions like you already have. Why should somebody in an Audi e-tron be exempt from the congestion charge, yet somebody in a 10-year-old Micra have to pay it? And, I may as well say it, I've said it before, I'll say it again, this is the crux of today's piece. As far as I can see it, at the present time, EVs are nothing more than a tax on the poor. Simple as that, and I say that with a bit of venom and a bit of spittle at the end, because that's how I feel about it. I am really rather fortunate. I live a life of comparative luxury. I could drive my F12 into central London and be exempt from the ULES charge. But anybody with a 15-year-old diesel Corsa or something like that has to pay it. And the fact is, I can afford to pay the charge. But they might not be able to. It's even more galling if you happen to work at night, because the way that the ULES charge works, it resets at midnight. I once went into London in my diesel Saab, and because I was going to Leicester Square to watch a midnight movie, Avengers Endgame in case you're wondering, I got there at about 10 o'clock at night and left at 3, half 3 in the morning. Because I'd been there past midnight, I had to pay two lots of the ULES charge. Yeah. 25 quid in fees to be in town for about five hours in the middle of the night, when relatively few people were about. Had I gone in a little bit earlier and also had to pay the congestion charge, I would have had to stick another, today, 15 quid on that. So to be in London for about nine hours could have cost me, let's call it, 40 quid in just fees. Imagine you're a worker. Let's say you're on £12.50 an hour. If you now are to venture into London, you're basically going to have to work at least two hours, two and a bit actually, just to cover the fees that Mayor Khan expects you to pay for keeping his city clean. That's disgusting. That's absolutely disgusting. That's outrageous. And this is disgusting. This affects so many people, including those that perform vital services, people without whom we would be absolutely scuppered. They're being essentially taxed beyond belief for the shame of not being able to afford a new car. Now, there is a scrappage scheme available for people that want to change their old polluting car for a new one. But it only applies if you live within certain London boroughs. It's £2,000, five, if you are registered disabled. But there's a big problem. The car you're expected to buy isn't exactly cheap. Electric cars, overall, I would say cost anywhere between sort of ten to £15,000. It does vary quite a bit compared with their regular counterparts. A Fiat 500 electric is 25 grand. The sort of average thing that a person might need with a small family is going to cost you 30 to 40,000 pounds, where previously you could have got it for 15 to 25. 
There is also some support for businesses, but to qualify for an individual grant at all, you must be on some description of benefits. For many, that means those on the lowest of incomes. The scheme does not require you to buy an EV specifically, but recent supply issues and the ULES zone itself have pushed the price of all ULES compliant vehicles up. This means that in many cases, to change your non-compliant vehicle for a compliant one could still cost you thousands of pounds. And I meet many people now who are convinced their only choice is an EV, regardless of whether it fits their needs or budget, not unlike the craze for diesel back in the 2000s. And, like with that, many people are worried were they to buy something like a hybrid, today it may be acceptable, but tomorrow it might not, and they find themselves needing to spend a whole bunch of money all over again. There is also one massively important angle I don't think I've ever seen mentioned. Every single charging point I have ever been to is unattended. To use it you need at minimum a contactless card or an app on your phone. I have never seen a charging station run like a traditional pump where you can charge then pay in the shop. For myself and many others, teething troubles aside, this is an example of a great convenience in the 21st century. But to my grandmother and many other elderly people, this is just impossible. I know people that haven't been able to understand the concept of chip and pin, who don't own a mobile phone because it's too complicated. How are these people ever to adapt? The brutal answer is, of course, that they won't. And we just need to wait for them to die off. Sorry, Nan, but the future has no provision for you in it. That is shameful. And, to paraphrase Columbo, one more thing. What about the one in nine people who currently work at night? Where are they to get their cheap electricity? But the fact is, in London in particular, and other large cities too, where electric cars are needed the absolute most, these are the places where they're the least easy to own. These are places where even millionaires don't have driveways. And therefore, it doesn't take an expert to work out that you are then going to be at the mercy of whatever it is a public charging point is going to cost you. Simple as that. Why is this such a difficult and radical concept for certain people to grasp? I just don't know. More than that, why did we let BP by Chargemaster? I'm not really much of a conspiracy theorist, but I do expect certain industries just to be evil. And oil companies are one of those. Trust me, I know, they're not exactly nice people. Why did we let them buy Chargemaster? If that's not a conflict of interest, I don't know what is. What's next? We give the contract for orphanages to Gary Glitter? Come on! On top of this, the spread of pricing for EV charging is ridiculous. Petrol and diesel, on the whole, are fairly predictable. Even eye-wateringly gouged prices are not that different from the lowest that you're ever going to pay. Broadly speaking, I'd say, at the point of filming, regular unleaded 95 octane fuel is going to cost you, in Britain, between £1.40 and about £1.60. That's about a 10 to 15% variation. However, electricity could be anywhere from free to 70 pence a kilowatt hour. Even looking at regular charging points, some of them are as low as sort of 20 to 30p a kilowatt hour, up to 35, 45 is pretty common you see now for a fast charger, all the way up to 70 for Ionity and the like. And yeah, I know if you get a discount card or if you have a membership card because you own one of these cars, you'll get the regular pricing, but that's just not how it should work. Everybody should be entitled to reasonably priced electricity. Could you imagine if you went to Shell and you've forgotten your Shell loyalty cards? They said, oh, sorry, it's not going to be £80 to fill your car. It's going to be 300 quid. That's, that's the equivalent. That's, that's how nonsensical it is. A good friend of mine actually gave me another example to equate with all this stuff that's going on. Let's just imagine for a second that it was decided, you know what? Steel brakes are really bad. You've got lots and lots of nasty stuff in the pads. They're, they're quite polluting, they're quite nasty. We're going to ban them from city centres. So the only people that are allowed to go into city centres will be people that have carbon ceramic discs. So your Ferrari owners will be fine, your Lamborghini owners will be fine, your posh people in Range Rovers and whatnot with high-end stuff, that they'll be fine. Your Micros, your Astras, your Focus of the world, that's it's not going to work for them, is it? Who can afford to spend £10,000 on some brake discs? Not many people. And though it may sound like a totally moronic, silly comparison, it's not actually that far off how things really are. And this is being expected of people at a time when they're facing greater financial strain than ever. Beyond that, and this is an area I see discussed almost never, 
What about businesses? You see, as a person with a house, with a driveway, my electricity prices are capped by the government. There is a limit to quite how bad they can be. But for a business, there is no such cap. And I've known a few businesses, local places owned by friends of mine, where their electricity bill hasn't doubled or tripled. It's gone up by a factor of six, seven, eight, possibly even more than that. Rates have gone from sort of 10 pence a kilowatt hour to nearly a pound in some cases. That is unsustainable. Can you imagine if you had a fleet of 20, 30 vans or maybe even more and you decided a few years ago, you know what? We're going to get rid of our diesel fleet, replace it with electric, for whatever reason you may choose. But you've decided this is the right thing for you. And you've done this, done your maths and worked out, yeah, it's going to work out. Maybe it'll cost you about the same as it did for diesel or whatever, but it'll be okay. You'll feel happy at night. You've, you've done the right thing. And then the cost of filling that goes up by that much. Imagine if your local petrol pump went up to about six quid. This is what I'm talking about. This is not me scaremongering. This is happening right now, two places all around. And sure, there are lots and lots of people for whom now they've decided, you know what, not gonna bother with the car, don't need it, public transport, great, lovely, and for you, excellent. But I bet you use Amazon Prime, or at least Royal Mail, or someone comes to the house at some point to make a delivery. Well, there was fuel in that vehicle, be it petrol, diesel, or electricity, that has to be paid for. This is a cost, ultimately, you are going to incur, whether you like it or not. This is why the price of everything is up, because transport costs are higher, and in just about every sector, it's a factor. About 15 years ago, when we had the global financial crisis, it was decided here, as in many other parts of the world, to have a scrappage scheme. We're going to get a whole bunch of old cars off the road, get some nice fresh ones on, and stimulate the automotive industry. And at the time, that really was the sole motivator. It wasn't for the planet, it wasn't to help people, anything like that. It was just to make sure that the car industry did not collapse. Today we are being told that the fate of the entire world hangs in the balance, and more than that, as hopefully you now see as well, we've also got a lot of people in really dire situations who are genuinely struggling and are being squeezed beyond belief from just about every angle. These are people that need real, real help. But beyond the scheme in London, which is applicable to very, very few people, anyone on average income, not on benefits, doesn't get the scrappage scheme, is there any help? No. None whatsoever. In fact, as time has gone on, all of the incentives for EVs and everything that surrounds them, getting charging points installed, all that stuff, has gone away or been reduced. And I see all of this going on every day. People I know who are worried that the car they own is now going to be too expensive to run, but the replacement they require is also too expensive to buy. People who are already struggling to put food on the table. People that are fearful of even turning their lights on at night, having the heating on because they can't afford it. People that are having prepayment meters forcibly installed. That was very, very naughty of you British gas and you've got a rightly deserved slap on the wrist for that. But this is the stuff that's actually going on. So Dickensian and horrible. And then I get people coming along that tell me, oh, James, you're just a silly, silly man. You know, you're doing it all wrong. Charging at publicly accessible points. Why don't you use your own private leather bound one where you get cheap rate electricity between the hours of 2 and 2.15 every second Wednesday? You absolute fool. <laughs> Do I look like an annoyed person? I imagine I might sound like a slightly annoyed person, and that's because, as you can probably tell, this is an issue that has really, really wound me up. I talk a lot, I get very philosophical, I wax lyrical all the time about cars and how lovely and brilliant they are, and it doesn't just mean fancy stuff like this. It means any car, any form of transport, any form of mobility. It's freedom, it's independence. And I really, really think that everybody, I mean, everybody across the country, across the world, is going to suffer if we start pricing people out of that. We are going to wind up creating a two-tier system between people that can afford to have an EV and therefore are allowed to drive wherever they like, whenever they like, and people that cannot. And eventually are going to be essentially priced out of that as well, because it will become increasingly punitive to have an old-fashioned car. Is petrol and diesel a little bit evil? Yeah, it probably is, but um, is essentially making people destitute and unemployed even more evil? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm going to go and have a lie down and, and maybe a, a biscuit. There's a packet of chocolate hobnobs over there, and they, uh, they had an accident earlier, but there are still some survivors. I might uh, pick off the stragglers in a minute.
Anyway, if you have made it to the end of this video, thank you so very much for listening to my uh, extraordinary rant. I, uh, I really do appreciate it. And uh, like I said at the beginning, if you'd be so good as to share this, I'd be very, very thankful. Anyway, as ever, oh crikey. Anyway, as ever, a huge thanks to you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.